Okay, three, I'm doing the yellow and the red. I'll definitely do the red, but the yellow and the red. So classifying the relationship between the pair of angles of seven and 10, hopefully this is just like a mistake in it, right? Seven and 10 are there. They are not on the tra same transversal. There is no line connecting them, which means that there's no relationship. Be careful with that kind of stuff. Because they're not on the same transversal. So alternate interior would be seven and 12 or 10 and five. Okay, they can't go across transversals. All right, this one says, what's the value of X in the figure? Okay, you had a bunch of different, there's Y's and X's. The relationship with these two would be what? No, um, it's alternate exterior. Alternate exterior. Luckily, you would have done the same thing, right? Oh, you use these two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, those two are alternate exterior, which means 2X plus 5 should equal 17X minus 70. 15X would equal 75. And X equals? Well, yeah. Five. Three. Three. Uh, five. Five. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next one said, what's the value of Y in the figure? So what's the relationship between the Y angles? Consecutive interior, which means? Equal to 180. 180. 3Y plus 5 plus 5Y plus 15 equals 180. 8Y plus 20 equals 8Y equals 160. Y equals oh, six. You mean A Y? Oh, A Y. Oh, A Y. I'm doing it ahead of my head. That's what I did, but 160, oh, so then that's or divide by 8. Y is 20. I plugged it back in and didn't get anything. Oh, okay. Careful. Just pay attention to what's asking for. All right. Which graph would be parallel to the graph of the equation Y equals negative 2 thirds X plus 20? So the slope of this line is what? Negative. Negative two thirds. Mm -hmm. The first thing you can do is rule out anything that has positive slope, which is this one and this one, and then just look at these two and see which one has a rise of negative two, one, two, and a run of one, two, three, and it's that one. How do you know exactly that is positive? Positive means it's increasing as you move to right to left. Oh, left to right is positive. Yeah, right to okay, I'll do that next time. Increasing as you move from left to right is positive, decreasing as you move from left to right is negative. Yeah. Isn't that like, isn't that like a perspective? No, that's why you say as you move from left to right, if it's increasing, left to right, it's decreasing. Don't change your perspective. <laughs> All right, 14. This is a lot of you got wrong. What is the slope of the line that's perpendicular to the line in the graph? So you've got to figure out. Oh, this is the one you think is wrong? Okay, so let's check. So this is this, right? Slope would be 1. Rise would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's a positive one fifth, which means that the slope should have been, if it's perpendicular, negative five. Oh, careful, careful, careful. Because if it's perpendicular, it's opposite reciprocal. Right? So I take this, I flip it, it becomes five, and then I change the sign, it's negative. All right, 16 says, write the equation of a line that has a slope three that passes through point negative four and negative 14. So I'm going to use slope or point slope. Y minus a negative 14 becomes plus 14. 3 times x minus a negative 4 becomes plus 4. 3x plus 12 minus 14. 3x minus 2. Yeah. Well, you got it. Did you plug it in for the m and the b? Remember, you can do the x, the y, and the, and the m, too. All right, 17 says, what's the equation of the line that passes through the points 3, negative 1, and 5, 7? First thing you do is find slope. Find slope 7 minus a negative 1, 5 minus 3, 8 over 5. That's your slope. And then pick either point. I'm going to pick the second one because it's all positive. Wait, wait, 8 over 2. 8 over 2. Jeez Louise, you're so aggressive. All of you. It's full. I always do that. Wait, I'm going to stand behind you when you take your test and be like, why did you do that? You got it wrong. <laughs> you should do that, though. You should do that. So that's four. I had the seven. Yeah. All right, find the value of X that would make the line PT, which is this one, and line CW parallel. So if those are parallel, and I look at these angles, they're called what? Consecutive interior. Consecutive interior. For those to be parallel, what would have to be true about those angles? Good. 5X plus 21 
plus 12x plus 6 would have to equal 180. 17x plus 27. Keep going, because I don't want to have to do this in my head. 1, 53, right? Mm, yeah, it's, it's, it's mine, Oops. I think. Yeah, because only. Okay, uh, this one is rough. Find the distance between these. I guess I'm this one. All right, so this is where, guys, shh, listen. You're going to graph these. First of all, they are already parallel, so you know they're parallel. You just have to find a perpendicular segment to, to separate them, right? So negative 2 is my y-intercept up 2 and over 1, up 2 and over 1. That's the first line. Second line is 1, 2, 3, and then up. 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. So there's my other one. You will be given a coordinate grid on this, so it's perfect, okay? But if I need to find a perpendicular segment, what's the slope of a line that's perpendicular? The opposite. So negative 1 half, right? Yeah. So what I'm going to do when I'm given on a perfect coordinate grid is count until I get from one point to the other by going negative 1, 2. So if I go down 1 and right 2, I get a point that I know both points of. So I would find the distance between 0, 3, and 2, 2 using the distance formula. Oh, so you use like... You got to find... So it already... This one already gave you the slope, right? It already gave you the slope, so I know they're parallel. I have to find the slope of a perpendicular line. That's so, the distance you use the, the line. Once you find the one that works, that you have both points, then you're going to find the distance. Whichever one that when you count from one point to the other using the perpendicular, it works. These are your always sometimes never questions. So alternate interior angles are blank congruent. And the word here is sometimes because it doesn't say that the lines are parallel. If the lines are parallel, then alternate interior angles are always congruent. But because parallel is missing there, that's why it's sometimes. 23 says consecutive angles are formed or formed by parallel lines are blank congruent. So consecutive interior angles are um, supplementary and supplementary angles can sometimes be congruent, but they don't have to be. So this is again, sometimes. 24 says corresponding angles formed by parallel lines are blank con congruent and corresponding angles with parallel lines are always congruent.